This conference will now be recorded. Hello and welcome to a odd edition of Monkhouse on Monday. Only odd because this isn't about experience recovery. This is about the survey that we created, the post-lockdown recovery survey. Now, Max Associates have been a great partner in uh, producing this insight and data and report. And we have Lisa from Max Associates. How are you today, Lisa? Good afternoon. I am good. Well, ready to go. I feel like I have all this data in front of me that I'm going to just, you know, come out with. You're going to have Fantastic. to stop. Fantastic. Good. So well prepared. I, don't worry. I don't have a problem with stopping you. I'm sure I'll manage it. So, um, Lisa, Max Associates, together with Data Hub and Big Wave and also um, My Customer Lens, have put together this, this report. Um, it's about 65,000 people have responded to it. And there's really interesting insight in there. So I just want you to talk to us through a lens of local authorities and operators. What sort of things do you think those organisations can get from the insight we've created? OK, I think, I mean, what organisations are looking for going forward is this whole, you know, what's going to happen when we start to um, ease lockdown and we're all mobilising. And I can imagine, particularly from elected members, senior council officials, residents, there's going to be this demand or this expectation to a certain extent that leisure centres and gyms will start to reopen. So yeah. on one hand, you know, the operators are going to have to consider the, you know, the real operational intricacies. And we all know every single leisure centre is different across the um, across the country. You can't just take, a, you know, an Aldi or a Tesco's model. So from an operational perspective um, that, you know, they're going to have to consider what can what you know size gyms will there be what does it mean for occupancies mm -hmm. i guess it's that supply side of the equation each operator is going to have to consider i think this data is going to be really important for the demand side you mm -hmm. know what um what is the level of consumer confidence i guess in terms of coming back and using facilities yep. But also, have there been any change of habits? You know, because we've been now locked down for eight, 10 weeks, and it's, I guess, mm. coming to a point where habits can start to change. So it's trying to understand to a certain extent um, what habits will remain once we all sort of get back out into the real world, as it were. Um, okay. And how's that going to impact usage patterns and income ultimately of those of leisure centres? Yeah. Because, um, you know, I think taking those two pieces of information together operators and the local authorities are going to have to understand the financial impact you know what is that this financial impact going to be for each leisure center each leisure service in this medium term and that's going to be crucial um, yeah. i also think it's going to start um it'll start the picture of what's the long term going to look like as well and start influencing right. some of those thoughts of are, are, are we just going to go back to pre-covid you know right. it'll take us 12 months to build back up and we'll be back to sort of february 2020 times or actually and i guess more likely just thinking about what how customers residents are feeling and how it will mm -hmm. shape you know service going forward okay so the way we've constructed it we have the ability to look at some of those feelings through a, a cross tabulation effect so we can look at age we can look at gender and we can yeah. also the low sex or the high sex so we can look at the socioeconomic grouping do you think there's any particular data in there that will be of value when we start looking at that cross tabulation about how maybe a woman aged 45 is feeling compared to an 18 year old lad no absolutely um i think it's going to be really really useful and i think it's going to show some of those differences where historically we treat groups um as a homogenous group the over 65s mm -hmm women as a group you know and yeah. i think this cross tabulation will really help but you know so you've got the the main sort of um you know the sixty five thousand representation you've then the ability to slice it in each way and that would help operators i think where you've got where um, councils are operating go ah oh, you know our council area is more rural it has got more mm. older people within it i can then slice that between male female and that's where yeah. i think the, the value of the insight is going to come Mm. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I was a past operator, you were a past operator. The other stuff for me is around, we, we know because of our planning for social distancing and that type of stuff, we're going to be at reduced capacities. So knowing some of this stuff around what people are looking for, how they feel, which age groups, what type of activity do they traditionally do or want to do? 
could be really useful in actually that whole operational planning that you referred to at the beginning yeah. around really defining the program and the offer and the opening times even as a result of this um and are you hearing anything from operators and local authorities around that sort of stuff at the moment i to be honest i don't think they've got into that detail yet right okay um you know if you can imagine quite a lot of the staff who are non who are who were operational of furloughed some of the business development teams are right. furloughed so i'm not sure we're, we're getting there yet but i think right. the insight from the survey will help them think about it and plan if you okay. see what i mean right. you know i mean some bits i have all this data dave i'm going to, have to start throwing some stats at you well but, that was going to be my next question so go okay. on and you do it <laughs> <laughs> i mean the bit i found quite interesting was those people or those members who are most active now or significantly more active than they were um, uh, before lockdown are less likely to use the leisure centres going forward. Yeah. And that was, to me, I was like, wow, that's, you know, really? Mm -hmm. um, and looking into it is ultimately, they're the self-motivated people. They're the yeah. ones who are now out in the parks. They are using um, more online um, activity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, it's almost that opportunity to say, actually, we don't need to worry about those guys. They're going to do fitness, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. The people who are significantly less active, though, are going to go straight back to the leisure centres because they mm -hmm. need the, the, the motiva you know, motivation Absolutely. or yep. socialisation. So I think it will help operators focus on, you know, a simple question of how active have you been? If they're, yeah. you know, if the members have been super active, they know they're less likely to use the leisure centres going forward. So that's kind of, mm. that was for me that I thought was really interesting. Absolutely. And I think there's a flip side to that, because anecdotally, I think most people are saying they're seeing a lot of people out in the streets running, cycling and all of those sorts of things. And if yeah. you then look at that, there must be a whole lot of people who have now become physically active because we hear the message every single day on the telly. How can we find some pathways and some routes for those individuals into what we do or create some outreach, create a product that doesn't operate within the square walls of our boxes? I think some really interesting stuff coming out of that. Did, did, did you did you see my um, cup of tea and biscuit it, after the interview? That was oh, perfect. that's brilliant. That's really <laughs> nice, isn't it? Where's mine, Simon? Come on. <laughs> no. So I got distracted yeah. by my, um, my so tea and biscuits then. That's all right. So give me some more key pieces of info. I know you've prepped for this. Okay. The other bit I found really fascinating, 65% um, of the respondents were women. Yeah which was huge. And I think that demonstrates, apart from the fact I've decided that men are obviously far too lazy to um, to fill out the um, questionnaire, they actually care. Yeah. You know, they took the time yeah. out. They wanted to respond. Um, and that, to me, is huge. You know, we know that leisure centres are the only sort of arena where women are overrepresented in yeah. user profiles. Um, so we, you know, we've really got to focus on tailoring services to their needs because it works. Yeah. Um, yeah. And secondly, my worry is flipping it in the longer term. If there is any reduction in facilities because of an affordability perspective, it could disproportionately impact women's activity levels. Yeah. And that to me yeah. is pretty, pretty important. And those are the, you know, councils need to think about that in terms of planning and any, you know, mm. impacts of a long term situation. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree. And I think there is slightly to, to, to defend some of the male kind out there. Um, you know, I've got neighbours who have taken part in group exercise classes online that they would never have tried before. Yeah. A little bit of insight in there around people who would want to pay for a membership to include it online. And there's actually quite a few males in there that were saying that's something I'd be interested in. So yeah. I think also seen this as an opportunity to to expand people's view of what group exercise what that looks like and feels like so i think there's both sides of that equation i think absolutely yeah. there's a danger if we if we damage the service we provide we could disproportionately damage female participation at the same time we also introduce the male population to something that's a little bit different i i just want to go back a little bit you talked about this data and this insight maybe affecting what we think about as different going forward. I noticed Sport England have just launched their strategy and there's, 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 it's quite, I think it's quite aggressive actually. I think it's quite brave of, of what they're saying, but how do you see this insight and this data changing what we do as a sector? Maybe what does the future look like? Um, okay, two things here. I was really going back to those people that are 
really active now looking to use leisure centres less. I think we need to link up, um, and again, this is the whole element of um, what's happening with COVID and active environment, parks, mm -hmm. open spaces, yeah. active transport. There's a mm -hmm. massive opportunity there. It's mm -hmm. almost not desperately holding on to those people who pay their monthly fee but come in 10 times a week. Yeah. But focusing on those that have become, you know, those, you know, th those that need the motiva motivation and socialisation mm -hmm. and almost provide routes out of leisure centres for those that yeah. will do it anyway. And, you know, you've got the activity that, you know, and if we can make parks and um, active transport where there's funding available, you know, linked to what the offer is, I think that will be, that will be really huge. And that's really yeah. important. Okay. Yeah, and I, and think, I think that really makes a difference. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think the other side for me, and this goes back, goes on to the economic um, impact of COVID. We know, you know, the opposite sides to women in terms of the low, the lowest represented groups are those with low incomes. Yeah. Um, I know you're running the analysis um, at the moment in terms of the low seg groups, in terms of the responses um, to this report. But my worry is, you know, um, people on low incomes um, naturally seem to have low, um, bigger health inequalities. Yeah. And we know as a sector that increasing physical activity of those groups can, you know, counterbalance those health inequalities. Mm -hmm. I think we need to do something radical. Our industry solution has always been, oh, we've got concessionary pricing. It's like, mm -hmm. OK, that doesn't work. It's not the sole solution. Yeah. I think it's an opportunity for the sector to reposition itself to some of the, to be a solution to that with public health right. colleagues because mm. ultimately if we're not careful it's those that inequality is going to get worse yeah no absolutely and I, I'm sure you've you've read some of the stuff that Martin Allison's been producing recently yeah. and there's some really interesting stuff there around that universal proportionalism piece um, and actually getting to those populations who don't have the back garden don't have the access to the open spaces that an awful lot of us do have and making sure that when we do come back that actually that's we we, we consider that as as our biggest opportunity to make a difference it's an opportunity my again converse to that the issue is are we going to have to be attracting those that can afford to pay because of budgetary constraints yeah. as opposed to those who will benefit most from health and physical activity Mm. So, and that's going to be the conundrum, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree. And I think this whole piece around those that can pay, pay more, those that pay less, pay less. My challenge is how do you motivate people? How do you put physical activity on people's agendas when it's never been on their agenda? Yeah. And I think it's, it's yeah. more than problems. Yeah. It's, there's an awful lot to do. But that is going to take us more than 15 minutes to talk about. So, Lisa. <laughs> close it down there otherwise we're going to be here for for hours so thank you so much for your time today that's really no useful and also thank you for being a really valued partner in this process because the insight that you you provided the way in which you you as an organization have behaved and shared all of this has been absolutely fantastic so thank you so much for that no no problems at all thanks dave cheers lisa take care bye-bye